It is repetition which makes for perfection. Let's try an arm. All right, let's do... Uh, tricep, bicep, I don't know, <laughs> tricep. That's a shoulder. Here's a tricep. And a little crossover lateral thing. Uh, forearm, fist. Um, a couple other smaller fingers. Okay. Um, ribs in there, chest. Belt, cape, neck, chin. Um, sure. All right, um, let's go ahead and apply some color in a broader, lighter sense. Nice thing about working digitally is you can just kind of get all over it. And uh, put a little... Depth there. Light source coming this way, of course. And it's on multiply. Um, so the more I go over it, the darker it gets. Let's do like a little rose color. See what happens if I do that. Just kind of I can't say that there's much planning in this. I do know that uh, when you put warm and cool colors next to each other, good things are supposed to happen. Pop some highlights in there. Not too many though. It's already too many, but I'll get rid of some of those. And get something approximating black. Drop it in. Probably be good to have photo reference so that you could um, get the values just right. Could still do that, I guess, but let's see how far I can get without using it. It's just really about getting values down. I'm not going to worry so much about colors, values. Well, I'm going to worry about hot and cold. So hot, this was, uh, when I was younger, I was completely mystified when they were hot and cold. It's the way I understand it, it's just blue and red. Cold has blue, more blue in it. If it's warmer, it has more red tones in it. Right, so the pink here. Then once I have these colors down, I, I basically pick off of what I've already chosen. Or applied. So. We still or define this. So once I have the darkest values here set up, I use hopefully just the colors I have here to start uh, rendering, making these uh, 
muscle shapes more 3D. But the goal at the end is not to have lines, right? It's a painting, so I gotta think about every th a line exists at the intersection of two different values, two different colors. Looks very purpley. That's the correct art term, I believe, purpley. The brush a little bit bigger. Again, the capes over here. Mm, no. It's going to do a cast shadow of the arm. Not a good idea. And then, so I've got the darkest tones. I'm going to go ahead and establish the mid tones a little bit. I bring that transparency down a little, a little bit more. I want. I need something in between. There we go. No. Base tones in the middle here. So what's nice about here, if you look, got uh, white, aqua, some, you got a bunch of different colors going on there. So that's your palette. So let's clean up some of these like blue lines up right at the bottom here. So I'm just thinking about this sort of shoulder shape. It's kind of a heart. So let's start thinking about it that way. Maybe a little more of like that. Uh, more blue in there. Let's try light gold. What happens if we do that? So these are the larger building blocks, larger muscle shapes. And it doesn't even really matter what color they are. It's more about values. So if you were to turn this to a black and white image, Um, it should feel three-dimensional, I guess. I'm trying to get rid of all the line work at this point, the under, what I had underneath.
just like a sketch. I, I like a little bit of the underdrawing to show. Just trying to get rid of as much of it as possible, I guess. And this one uh, I describe as sort of like creating the islands. If you um, ever look at like Google Map or any map of the world, you uh, you'll see the dark blue of the ocean, and then the lighter blue of the shore, and then the beach. So think of this as the dark ocean, the shore. Here's the ground that actually comes up, and at the peak is the mountain, right? So it's a topographical thing. So the white represents the top of that um, formation. Darker land. Great. So each of these islands, there's like a double island there. Each of those islands represented topographically. Here, I'll, I'll, do, I'll explain what I was doing. So we go to the deep ocean. Deep ocean. Here's the deep ocean. And as we get closer to the shore, it turns that color. It's got a little jungle on it. Too, too purple. Does that make sense? All right. So <laughs> that little island, each of these uh, muscles is protruding off of, out of these dark seas. What am I saying? So take this notion, transfer it over here. So if this represents the darkest part, I'll go very light. Maybe make the brush a little bit bigger. So in this configuration, the muscle shapes are roughly like this, like an offset heart, All right? One, two, three, the bicep, that was horrible, the tricep, one, I think there's another one back here. The elbow pops over here. There's this muscle that crosses over here, and out of that muscle comes a couple other muscles that come down to here. All right? So we're trying to get to the island that is this.
It's not a backpack you would take to the mall walking around. It's a travel backpack. It's like when you are going from your hometown to another con to set up at a convention. Or you're traveling and you want to take your art supplies with you. But it's nice when you're flying to get everything you need, like right then and there. And there's enough slots and pouches that it's actually easy to take stuff out and put it back in very quickly and security. But I would go pre TSA every day. And you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. Take it, you know, take your depending on the airport, but and the country. I usually don't take anything out. And the interesting thing is, like, after a shadow, like, the part that's often shiniest is, like, right behind the darkest part. You'll see that, like, noses a lot. If there's a nose, an upper lip like that. Like, the shadow of the nose will be here. And then... The widest areas, you can look at photographs, are like right along that edge. All right. So when you're painting, you just have to look for those relationships between shadows and, and highlights. You know, I was going to put um, some time and update some of the emotes that we have. Created a bunch early on and then didn't put as much energy into it. I don't know if you guys had any suggestions, I'll write it down because I always, during the streams, I go, oh, that would be a funny emote if we had that. And then later when I actually sit down and think about creating these things, I realize um, I've blanked. Someone asked me like what character, I, I was gonna make this Superman. So painting, like on canvas, I find that you're just going back and forth over the same lines to find the edge. Right? Sometimes that means going with the negative and then the positive, the negative, positive, et cetera, et cetera. I like doing stuff where uh, it's very low opacity and just kind of going in subtly, uh, bringing down the saturation of colors. So you can see the yellow is the most saturated along the very edge. Just a little more of a painterly effect, I guess. And there's gray, blue gray over everything I've just done. I don't like it, so 
Now, popping these highlights on every single muscle mass um, makes the thing look very shiny, but also makes it look very uniformly lit and bulbous, steroided out. Um, so I like to think of where I want the eye to go. Let's say it's going to be up here and kind of knock these down. All right, you still see them, but they're not as they're not as hot as these white ones up here. Right. So now the eye, the sh the focus of this is moving more up here. I'm gonna even go darker in here. What happens when I start putting um, some color over this? This to be as dark as possible. X. that opacity and just work these islands back up a little bit. Okay, now let's get a little Superman blue in there. And we're gonna switch the brush to something that's just flatter. And let's do a, diff it's a different layer. Hit multiply, let's see what happens. Oops, that's not what we want to have. A bit larger. And what this does is it per preserves the um, the values of established in the underdrawing, right? It's kind of lay lays it on top. And then it's red over yellow, right? have to think about that.
I like the idea of it being the reddest up here. And then down here, it's going to just get darker. Same thing here. We're okay with it just getting kind of darker in here. Let's just put a suggestion of a head here. Uh, that'd be the nose, upper lip, the jowl. And get that flesh color back in there. Then use the outside color to draw with negative space. Maybe a little red. Oops, the nose. Right now we have a suggestion of a, an actual face you can see. If one were to Zoom in, you can go in and add a lot of detail that will not look great when you pull back out. It's too fine, but I'll show you what I mean. There's the nose. Nostril. Edge of nostril, upper lip. Lower lip. A shadow that goes right here. It's very dark, I think. There, yeah, that's what it looks like more on my screen there. And then out of the um, colors, I can add a little bit of blue. Too much, let's bring that down. Too much, bring that down. Still too much. Yeah, there we go. See that blue, kind of the under light of this blue under the chin. Maybe into that shadow there a little bit. Catching that upper lip, that light bouncing off here, bouncing up there. Maybe even on the underside of the nostrils. I get this dirty flesh color over here. Kind of round out that chin a little bit more. And again, I was talking about the shadow, right? If the shadow of the nose falls there, I'm going to drop some blue in there. That means of this flesh, and we're going to go and lighten it up right there. Let's bring that lightness right at the edge of that shadow. This is the shadow of the nose. This is the upper lip. the chin underneath the lower lip. 
Here's the top part of the nostril. This is the uh, edge of the cheek there. And let's just uh, go ahead and define the edge of the face a little bit more. Actually, it's kind of a greenish hue on the screen. It's more yellow. But you see how, um, what I was talking about, like here it looks good, the values, but when you get small, the darkest values actually become a line, which is what you don't want. You want it to be values and less, less lines. So let's, so that's why I don't want to work too kind of zoomed in because you're going to, be painting for something that when you look at it actual kind of viewing distance doesn't work. And I've done that whenever I've drawn digitally or corrected something digitally, go, oh, I can zoom in and really add every little hair or feature, and then you zoom back out and it doesn't look right. The scale of it's wrong for the size of um, what you're trying to achieve. So you have to think about the scale Well, white is the most powerful color you've got, so you've got to use it sparingly. Huh, it's white on my screen, it looks blue. Definitely a bluish tint to everything. So a lot of people, when they're color for the first time, want to put the highlights on the edge, which you can do, I guess. Um, but that's kind of learned from looking at comic book art. For the most part, it's going to be here. I was talking about those topographical sort of maps. And depending on how fine you want to get with it, you can render this so that's really smooth and exact, or you can do it so that you see the pencil lines kind of like brush strokes, sorry, that I've got. which I do prefer, actually, to be honest. It's a very subtle render that I'm doing. So again, the brightest blues are going to be up here and less down here. Yeah. 
And we have a darker red. Again, the, the brightest ones are going to be there. I will have a couple down here. Too big. If you guys can see that, it might be easier if I do it like that. Uh, it's it's little it looks like little scribbly lines, which they are, when you get it really close. Um, but the idea is that when you zoom back out, it looks like kind of shimmering textures that are in the blue. This is where it's kind of a abstract, like it's a mix of drawing and painting here, which I kind of like to introduce. Purists will go like, well, you're drawing now, you're not painting, whatever. Find out what works for you, dude. And then you get the whitest parts here. And with the red on the cape, rather than going white, just go with a lighter red. You don't have to worry about putting like other colors and there's like blue now in the red down here. That's, I think the fun of painting is that you can kind of start applying, as long as it's the right value, so theoretically you can put um, colors anywhere, right?
So I put some red in, and now I'm going to basically grab the neighboring color and kind of fade out that red so it's very subtle. Let's see if that works. Might have been a horrible mistake, but... Now I'm going to put a little bit of a fine edge to it, like kind of rim lighting over here, just to pop out chest and arm from the rest of the uh, body. This pose, I don't know what he's doing. I feel like he's... Celebrating Batman's birthday or something. Just the color rough. Uh, no, I might get up here and there, but not in the blue. Okay.
that's kind of cool. It's a painting, so it could suggest things rather than be literally. Uh, well, on the screen it looks completely black. <laughs> on my screen, you can see subtleties. Take my word for it. Anyway, I was just messing around. All us Batman fans of this is just a fever dream. Superman fans that this would possibly even be. You know, I was just going to leave a cartoony thing, but now I think I, I feel like I can actually go here. But yeah, it'd be cool to see a um, bunch of people all wearing or sporting the same sort of backpack. Would have been helpful if I had Superman actually kind of looking down the full value of the shadows that we've already wasted our time. Too. Now, if one were doing an actual um, painting of this, you see the benefit of doing a rough using a digital device. 